क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट दैट हाउ एक्सेस मैट्रिक्स इज इम्प्लीमेंटेड इन मेनी डिफरेंट वेज लाइक द ग्लोबल टेबल एक्सेस लिस्ट केपेबिलिटी लिस्ट एंड एट लास्ट लॉक इन की मेकेजम एंड लास्टली वी विल कंपेयर अमॉन्ग दिस इम्प्लीमेंटेशन दिस विच इज वाइज टू बी चूजन एंड इफ देर इज एनी कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ दिस इम्प्लीमेंटेशन दैट कैन बी अचीव फॉर अ बेटर प्रोटेक्शन डोमेन स्ट्रक्चर In generally the access matrix is sparse that is most of the entry of this access matrix is given a null or a blank value but the data structures that are provided to it is access matrix sparse is not given in this architecture because the implementation is different here other than the sparse matrix of this access part so here we will need another implementation techniques to imply this access matrix into the scene The first one is a global table. The global table is a simple table that combination of a triples that is the object name, the domain name as well as the access rights. So the global table is having this triples and the entries or multiple triples on this global table. So say if there is an operation M that is to be performed of an object OJ and it is inside the domain DI then we can say that it belongs to the triples that is OJ DI RK where M belongs to RK and RK is the final set of operations that can be performed now if the triples is find within that particular global table then we can allow an access to the object to have this im operation performed to be then object oj other than that the access is denied because it triples doesn't belong to the global table but there are some major drawbacks to the global table that is usually it is not kept into the main memory because of its large structural area so extra io is needed to first bring this global table into the main memory and then search for the triples inside it in addition as we have to mention a special grouping for every access inside that permission for the objects say for there is an object which can be read by many of the processes so the object with the domain name and the access rights that is the read operation of every process on that object should be mentioned every groupings in that global table so that makes the global table to grow in a incompatible largeable size so some comparisons can be done to this global table and the result is an access list if we consider an column of a global table that gives us an idea of the object that which domain rights is there and which operations can be performed on it so the object will be given a set of domain right and the access performed on that particular object so now that the set belongs is m operation is performed on object oj and that belongs to object di so the set performed is access list m comma di where m belongs to rk and di is the domain on which object is performing so if we consider all the empty list or the empty columns in the access list to be discarded on that global table so the non empty access rights that is a combination of these two pairs can be considered as an access list so access list is a list of these pairs plus a default set of access rights for a particular operation so if this operation that is oi of that m comma dj is being generally requested by your process then first the access list is search for this combination of pair if it is there belonging to the access list then the access will be allowed to the process to have that object on that particular domain if it is not in the access list then the default set of the access list is searched if it belongs to the default list of the access says that m then also it will allow the access on that particular domain for that object and if the m does not belong to the default set then the access will be denied at its most so it is better for the sequence of the operation that it is better to look that access list and then the default set or the efficiency can be improved if the default set is looked first so that the operations can be in the default list other than it is looked in the access list 
So in this way, access list can be combined with a default set of access rights to give us a major improvement in the protection than global table as an implementation of the access matrix. Now we will move to our next type of implementation that is capability list. So rather than grouping the columns together of an object which produces the domain and the operations that is performed on that object, we are here considering a row on that access matrix to be taken as a capability list. Here, as it's keep the domain on which a particular object or a list of objects along with the operations that can be performed on an object be a given pair. And the list of the objects together on which a particular operation can be made is known as a capability. And the list that contains this entry of the capability along with its operation is known as a capability list. So here we are looking for a row in the matrix or other than looking for a column in the matrix which is associated with the object. So now we are associated with each domain particularly which contains the object along the access rights of it. Although the capability list is associated with the domain, but the domain is preserved that it cannot be used directly in the user's address space at any cost. So that the domain can be defined only by the operating system or by some privilege instruction that can be performed by this only kernel level data structure. Now as the operating system has defined the domain for that the object will have that access rights, so the users can indirectly access rights on that particular object. So suppose a user is requested for a particular operation on the object, so first the domain is checked or the capability list is checked that the user is capability matched with that object or not. If that the object of which the user is requested for is in the object list of that capability, then user is allowed to gain its access on that particular capability other than it is denied. So to define and distinguish between the capability and the normal objects that is performed by every user processes, we can follow the two rules of anyone. The first rule is to use a tag that is one bit associated with each object in the system. If the object is a capability that can be defined only by this operating system, then the capability bit is or the tag bit is set. Other than that, for every other object, like for the integers, floating point numbers, characters, booleans, or other any data types or data structure like stack, heap, queue, the two come the objects visible and directly differentiated from the particular capability objects. So using this tag line, we can make the capability object distinguishable from the normal objects and make the capability only resourceable access by this particular processes which came to by indirectly access rights on that object. Second type is to divide the memory space into two different sections that is one used for sectioning the particular object of the user processes and the other section contains only the capabilities that can be accessed indirectly by the user via the capability list. By using this memory separation distinction of the area, we can provide a finer gain protocol or protection on that particular access rights as we are clearly defining that the access rights on the capability cannot be defined if there is any attempt to access on the other part of the memory section area. Say if any user process object wants to have an access right on the capability, then they will directly trap it to the operating system as an illegal access has happened. Now that this capability list is applicable to many of the operating system, like Multix is an operating system example, also the Mac is an operating system example, which takes care of this capability list implementation. And the last type of implementation we'll discuss is the lock-in key mechanism. This is somewhere a compromise between the access list and the capability list. Here along with the capability that is the list of objects, we are configuring a set of locks on this capability that should be as a unique bit of patterns and the keys that is a set of unique bit of patterns from the user side. So whenever the user is requested for a capability from this access list, then the access list key must be matched with any of the 
capability list lock so that the user can gain access on that particular access right for the object prescribed. Here the capability is defining the lock and the user which is requesting has the key. So this unique bit patterns is matched and the key and lock features in the used to implement the access matrix. Now, as there we are having um, lots of implementation of this access matrix, we will compare between this implementation that which is the wise to be chosen as in the operating system to give the protection at its fullest. If we choose the global table as an implementation, then we give an, a simple and efficient idea because it combines uh, all the pairs for an access right, object, as well as the domain of that particular object so that the global table can easily select between this object and directly to its domain. But the difficulty or the drawback of this global table as we have told that the larger requirement area in the memory as every pair needs to be there for every reduction of that object there should all the processes mentioned in the global table. So we seldom use the implementation of a global table and move to the implementation of an access list. Now as the access list maintain the access rights with each object as a pair of the domains, so we can directly access the domains from this access list searching. But the main problem associated with access list is that the domain is searched along with the default access right set. So whenever the user is finding an access right for an object, it should also search for the domain according to that. And if for a larger system and a larger process including that process, so there should be a larger number of search which is incompatible for giving a protection. Now as the capability list is directly not used or by the user, so we can preserve a different capability along with its access rights for a domain. Now as the objects are preserved with this domain and the access right list, we can say that we can give the most efficient way of looking at the access. The revocation of access rights become extremely difficult in this access list and capability list procession. Now the procession between this access list and capability list is the lock and key mechanism. But the problem lies also the lock and key mechanism is that we have to search the entire access list and to the corresponding entry in the capability list that the lock and key has matched or not. So in many of the system we use some of the combination of the lock key mechanism with capability and some uses like Unix the combination of this capability list with access list to produce a better and convenient way of using protection and giving the access rights protected not by directly used by the users but only by the operating system from the capability list as well as from the object side it can gain the domain and access rights from the access list. So it gives the best size of the protection that is used by the particular structure. Now to illustrate this example we need to simplify an area. Now once a process wants to access an open file then first the file is open and get added to the access list. Now as the access list is mentioned for all the files that is open for a particular process, now if the process works and wants a request for to access an object, then the next capability list is created for that particular capability. And after the last access to the capability, the capability list is then removed and thus the access list is then freed up for the protection purposes. Now after the file is open for this access list, a new entry is added to the access list for the file open. Next after the file is open, the file is checked for the access rights within that user's domain. If the user's domain belongs to that access list get matched to the capability list, then the object is associated with that particular process and the process can execute on that object. After that the object has finished its operation and the object is released by the particular process then it again get back to the capability list to the entry that it has already freed up. This type of structure is implemented by Unix mostly to support the protection at its most. Also the right to the access must be checked before the open file table entry is closed for every operation of the process. Say for if there is a capability for a read access on the file, then only a process can perform read on that particular object. 
if a capability of a read access is wants to access by an object process that wants to give a write to that particular object, then it would be trapped to the operating system as an illegal attempt to access and read access capability on a write access object. So in this way, we can choose between a combination of access list and the capability list or as an access list with the lock and key mechanism to ensure the maximum protection that can be given to a domain of structure of the user processes. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.